Well, Tabro Dorgan and Shaw had come to Marla, and he saw Rakto, her son, Van Vigilis, of his son Martin. And then our Mwekas a goal, yeah, our Mwekas a goal, the Martin, has a lot of winch, her son, the Pabakta, her son, the Glushakta, her son, the Heron, of her son, the Fobo. We're happy here tonight and proud in Come to Murdoch, the Fans Club, to organise this night for Martin McGuinness and for his family, to show how proud and thankful we are to them for everything that they and Martin have done for the freedom of Ireland, for the, the struggle and for their people. Um, it's the least we can do here in Belfast to show the, the people of Derry, and particularly the McGuinness family, how we feel about them. On behalf of the Common the Felons Club and the Republican movement in Belfast, can I say that you're all very welcome? And can I wish can I extend a very special welcome to Bernie and the McGuinness family who've travelled here from Derry tonight? It is a deep, deeply felt honour for us to be able to host this evening to remember our friend and comrade Martin. His loss is so keenly felt by all who knew him and no one knows us more than his family and his close friends. So what we wanted to do here tonight was to pay our own special tribute to Martin. What we want is to reflect on the person he was, to reflect on the friend, the comrade, the colleague that he was, the Oglock that he was, and really, we want to remember and reflect on the man we all loved so well. And my education really began after I left school, on yes. the streets of the Bogside with the civil rights uh, movement and the debates. I, I lived in a city where the people were treated like second-class citizens in their own country, where the minority uh, ruled the roost, uh, ruled the local government, and uh, effectively frowned upon Irishness. And before ever there was an IRA in my city, uh, the British Army were shooting citizens dead. And as a result of that, they were seen as an occupying army. And many people in my city saw the British Army as terrorists. Uh, the young people of the city rose up and fought against the, the British Army and various means mm. were used. And, and I fought against the British Army mm. on the streets of Derry. And I don't make any apology for anybody about that. Well, I joined the IRA because of the brutality of the state forces, the RUC and the British Army. You know, before I joined the IRA, people were, were being killed in Derry. Mm -hmm. Sammy Devenny was beaten in his own house by the RUC. Civil rights protesters were being beaten off the streets. People like Seamus Cusick and Desi Beatty were being murdered by the Royal Anglian Regiment. And then, of course, we had the introduction of internment where prisoners were being tortured and innocent people were being taken out of their homes and held. So all of that infuriated my generation that we have as much right to fight back as, for example, young Palestinians or young South Africans uh, fighting against apartheid. And so we did. Well, uh, we will always take into consideration the feelings of the people of Derry and these feelings will be passed on to our GHQ in Dublin, you know. In 1973, you were convicted by the Republic of Ireland Special Criminal Court after being caught with a car containing 250 pounds of explosive and 5,000 rounds of ammunition. You refused to recognize the court and was sentenced to six months imprisonment. In court, you declared your membership in the provisional IRA without equivocation. You stated, we have fought against the killing of our people. I'm a proud member of the provisional IRA and very, very proud of it. Could you elaborate what happened at that time and your statement? Well, I wasn't caught with a car okay. with explosives. I was arrested in close proximity to a car. <laughs> <laughs> the British government, they fear this movement. They fear this leadership. They have every right to fear us because in or out of Leinster House, we lead the most dangerous and committed revolutionary force in Ireland for 65 years. And I had read very, very carefully a number of theses that had been written mm. by a number of very senior generals within the British Army, in which they conceded that they could never militarily defeat the IRA. 
I was part of a group of people of which was led by Jerry Adams, which very seriously uh, engaged in a, a critical examination of where uh, the conflict was at, even against the backdrop of the willingness of the IRA to fight for many forever. Uh, we decided that we would ask the IRA to take a unilateral initiative and incredibly the IRA agreed with my and Jerry Adams' assessment. The history of this island was changed and I think changed forever and for the better. I am an elected leader of the people of Ireland. I have duties and responsibilities and uh, I'm not afraid of the reality that there are people out there who are hostile to the peace process. If I was afraid I wouldn't go out my front door in the morning. I go out my front door every morning. Well, I, I was introduced to my wife to be by Colm Keenan. Uh, Colm Keenan was my, uh, my friend. Uh, he, he was murdered by the British Army in uh, March 1972. He had been working for some considerable time in 1971 to uh, get Bernie and I together and uh, finally managed that. And here we are, 36 years on, and we're still together. Gay Mitchell, who found it difficult on behalf of Fine Gael to get the campaign off the ground, thought the way that he would try to ignite his campaign was by attacking me. And oh, did he make a big mistake. <laughs> and of course he said during the, the late, late, late debate, Martin, you're no Nelson Mandela. Well, I never claimed to be Nelson Mandela. <laughs> but I resisted saying, gay, yeah, you're no Michael Collins. <laughs> I also resisted saying, gay, yeah, let's go back in time, nearly a hundred years, and you and I are standing before Michael Collins, or Parik Pierce, or James Connolly. And they had to decide which of the two of us was going to go into the GPO with them. Who do you think they would decide? <laughs> I'm a doer. I'm someone who has been at the heart of delivering one of the most important peace processes in the world and been at the heart of the most important political negotiations that ever were conducted on this island in the last century. My faith is in the people of Ireland. I'm not retiring anyway. I'll be a Republican to the day that I die. I will work for Sinn Féin to the day that I die. And I, I'll always be very proud to be from the Bogside. Oh, no. I've no. no. ended up, up in many uh, famous places throughout the world, but my heart lies in the Bogside and with the people of the Island. J.J. Bradley to present Bernie with a bunch of flowers on behalf of the Irish Republican Families Association. It was a real fitting tribute uh, to Martin. Very difficult at times, but I think that people got an insight into Martin the man, the, a more personal side of Martin. We all know he's a strategist, we all know he's politics, but for me, even listening to Spike and listening to Martin Ferris talk about him in a very personalised way, I think we were all able to share that experience. And you know, there's one thing for certain, Martin McGuinness is dead, but he's not gone. His memory lives on and it was very much alive and well in here tonight and it was fantastic that Bernie and Faker and Emmett came so that they could get an appreciation and understanding of how the Republican family feel 
about Martin. We miss him deeply, but he has influenced us and will continue to influence us until we reach the 32 county democratic socialist republic. The task that he has set for us is to deliver that. Well, I thought tonight was a fantastic occasion to pay tribute to the memory of one of our greatest heroes and greatest Irish Republicans that ever lived. Martin McGuinness was an inspiration, an inspiration to all of us who were part of that struggle. He was a man of courage and integrity and a man of tremendous commitment. His contribution to our struggle will inspire us on the road to real freedom. It was great to be here tonight and to share that night with his wife Bernie, with Emmett and Fikra, and with all his comrades and friends who came here tonight in great numbers to pay tribute to a, le a legend, a legend in our lifetime.